Welcome to Testing AI. In this channel, I break down different AI tools and keep you up to date with the AI world. If you like this video, make sure to hit subscribe. Hello everybody. In today's video, I'm going to use ChatGPT as an English language translator and improver. I'm also going to start a new series called Prompt Engineering, and this video is the first video in that series. Uh, before I get started, I wanted to mention that I'm trying to reach 1000 subscribers. So if you get any value from this video, please hit subscribe and help me reach that goal. All right, let's get started. Uh, before I get started on today's video, let me explain the term prompt engineering a little bit. So uh, a lot of AI tools um, require you to provide specific asks and how you structure those asks decide how well your results are. So you can provide simple queries and it'll give you generic answers. But if you provided really specific queries, you can get a lot more value. And even though it mentions the word engineering, you don't need to be a programmer because um, a lot of times when people hear engineering in the terms of software or computers, they think they need to know how to code. The interfaces in current day AI tools like ChatGPT or Stable Diffusion or a lot of these tools that you hear out there now do not require you to know how to code. Uh, for instance, a lot of the functionalities is hidden behind a black box. So you just provide information of what you need and it's going to respond to you like a human. The point is to not have you know machine level language. So while the prompts might look more advanced, they're actually helping you simplify your asks. So instead of providing a generic one paragraph ask on what you need, you can break down your requests in structured prompts and that will help you get a lot better results. So the first example I'm gonna to use today is uh, the English, English language translator and improver. My goal for today is to provide ChatGPT with text from different kinds of languages and have it translated back to me like Google Translate does. And instead of just giving me translations, I'm also gonna request it to improve the English that it responds me with. Uh, so let me break down the structure of the prompts I'm gonna use. The portion I highlighted is the prompt I'm going to use. All uh, credits are linked to the description of this video. So there's four sections here. Uh, the first section is the ask. The second section is adding more details to the ask. The third section is adding exclusions to the ask. And the fourth section is an example or the first instance of what I need it to do. Here, I'm, I'm requesting it to act as English translator a spell checker and improver. I'm, I'm also telling it that I'm gonna speak in any language I want and it's your job to detect that language, translate it and provide me an answer in the correct and improved version of my text and in English. Now that is the main question, that, that is the main query for this. But instead of just stopping there, I'm gonna add some more details to this prompt. Most of the time when a translator responds to you, it responds in pretty simple A0 A level words, which means it's gonna to respond to me in the simplest version of the language. But instead of just leaving it there, I'm gonna add an additional request of making the English response I get much higher level. So it's gonna be more upper level English and not just the base level simplified English. That means the meaning will be the same, but the words will sound more professional, more literary. And the third section is, is exclusions. This means I'm gonna provide it what I don't want. A lot of times ChatGPT responds to your queries with explanations, and I'm telling it not to provide any explanations um, and only respond me with the correction improvements and nothing else. That means I just want the response. I don't want, any, want it to explain it to me what's going on. Uh, and I also wanna get started by mentioning my first sentence so it starts the thread. Uh, this sentence actually is in Swedish, so I'm going to start this query and see how it responds to me. Alright, so the first query is in Swedish and it responded me that, that I desire information regarding where to travel, what to do and where to reside in Sweden. And that was what I was expecting it to do. Make sure to stick to the end of the video to see how it responds to all five languages. The second language I'm gonna use is Tamil. So this is a complicated Indian language and the script is pretty complicated as you can see. So as expected, the language got translated from Tamil to 
to English. And this is, this is exactly what I provided it. The third language I'm going to use is Arabic. It successfully completed the translation. Once in the Northwestern Arabian Peninsula, it is a member of the Semitic language family, which also includes Hebrew and, and Aramaic. Yep, that's exactly what I expected. The next language is Polish. The Polish language belongs to the Western Slavic group of the Slavic branch of the Indo-European language family. Its closest relatives are the Czech and Slovak languages. Uh, that sounds correct. And the final language I'm going to use is Japanese. Japanese belongs to the Japonic fa language family. In Japan, 120 million people speak it as their first language and over 1 million people speak it as their second language. So all of these examples work pretty well. If you know any second or third languages, I, en I encourage you to try, uh, try ChatGPT with the languages that you know and see how well it's translated. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit like and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to have a bunch of other use cases coming up in future videos in the prompt engineering series. Till the next one, thank you.